Tappy, I hope you're all keeping well. Live from the Camberley Car Show. Forget about your Salon Privés and your concourse cars. This is obviously the place to be. The most renowned car show in the UK by a long shot. And I have to say this because I'm local, of course. I have to say though, the turnout probably isn't up to that of previous years. And the reason for that is probably the weather. It is absolutely roasting today. So hot, anyone with the right ideas, probably down the pub in the aircon having a pint or two. So I've seen quite a few cars so far. Scuderia Prestige have a bit of representation here. They've got the Radical on show, uh, a nice Ford GT, and of course the 812. In terms of the mix of cars, quite a lot. A lot of old Fords, a lot of 80s Fords, a lot of Cosworths and Capris as well, we'll touch on that. But we're just gonna take a, a mosey round the, the event, have a look at some of the cars. More importantly, chat to some of the car enthusiasts about their cars, because these are people that genuinely care about what they do. Real car buffs, they, they absolutely treasure these machines and look after them. So uh, hopefully get some good insight when we chat to some of those folks. Let's go. Okay, so we have a lovely line of Ford Capris here and I'm here with one of the owners. Who is? Hi, I'm Steve. Steve, excellent. And this is a Capri 2.8. Now, when I first approached you about this car, yep. Yep. I a bit naively thought that it was a 2.8 laser. No, they didn't actually make the laser in a 2.8. They didn't make the laser in a 2.8. No. So that was only available in some specific versions. What were they? They had a 1.6 and a 2 litre. 1.6 and a 2 litre. Yeah. And you mentioned you use this as a daily driver, pretty I much, do, right? yeah. yeah. Daily driver, it's used every <laughs> day. That's impressive. It's used rain, shine, really? snow, and it, lots of sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is absolutely pristine. And the mileage on this currently is? Uh, currently it's 68,000. 68, which is nothing. Which is nothing. No, one of the previous owners had it for, I think, 12 years, and yeah. he did 400 miles in it. Which is literally Which nothing. Which is peanuts. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So, do you, how do you store this? Does it kind of live in a garage? No, no. It really? lives outside. Yeah. It just lives out. Any yeah. cover on it or anything? No. Outside 24-7. So, so I guess the question is, how is it in such good nick? You must look after it. Well, yeah, because you use it as a daily as a daily car, once it's clean, yeah. uh, once the mechanics are sorted, it yeah. pretty much, all right, it gets polished quite often yeah, but if anything goes wrong with it you notice it straight away yeah sort it straight away yeah easy, easy job it's not hidden in a myriad of electronics is no, it? no no like, no, like the car. no there's virtually no yeah. electronics on it so okay if we have a little look under the bonnet under the bonnet okay hang on two seconds Fantastic. So, so this is um, pretty much as it came out of the factory, with a few exceptions. Right. Um, the main exception would be it's got a K&M filter, where the normal filter would be. Obviously, changes the acoustics a little bit. Not from an really. A little, a little bit. A little yeah, bit. it gives okay. it a little bit of extra power, but not absolutely shed loads. Um, strut brace, that's extra. It tightens up the front end. Cool. Yep. And also the. Um, the lifters here, mm. which it just saves having a pole in the middle. Yeah, absolutely. So a nice little mod there. Yeah. And I think the first thing you notice about a car of this era, when you open the, the, the bonnet or the hood, as they say in the USA, is the amount of space you've got, right? A modern car is completely packed it's out. It's completely right? packed out. So you've got room to work. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, if you look on some of the smaller engine cars, uh, two litre or 1.6, it's even more space and you think, where's the engine? Yeah. But even on the 2.8, which is fairly big for a Capri, yeah. there's plenty of space. Nicely done. So, get a lot of problems with it? Touch wood? No. I did have, when I first bought it, I had a few overheating issues. Right. Um, I cured that by putting a bigger radiator in it. I've got a, a three, three core radiator in it now. Right. Um, but other than that, touch wood, no, nothing at all. Fantastic. Good. And because I use it all the time, yeah. if anything does go wrong, it's fixed. And parts? Parts, within parts? reason, are yeah. fairly easy to get hold of. Yeah, good. Um, I've been into Capri's for a very long time, so 
I've got a, a good amount of people that I can get on to. There's just certain odd parts that you wouldn't expect yeah. a car to get, which are, but uh, nothing major. Yeah, I've got a, a Renault 5 Turbo. Uh -huh. So it's had some cooling mods to improve the cooling because they're so, renowned for overheating, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, parts, though, I, I, I'm finding these days get harder and harder to come by. Yeah, obviously, with, <laughs> I mean, this one's 1984. Yeah. So that's, that's a lot of ages. It is. You know, and, and yeah, things are getting harder, yeah, yeah. but at the moment, they're not too bad. Nearly 40 years old. Too yeah. sharp 40 years. Is, right so impressive stuff is this your dream capri you said you, you're a man of many capris is this I've, your dream capri? I've had about 13 capris wow that's dream okay. capri no definitely no. not what is the dream capri for you either a, a mark one rs31 right or a tickford capri okay quite hard to find <laughs> not so much hard to find but they're rather expensive right i, I thought they were quite hard to find so that you're saying there's a bit of availability on those they're not mega hard to find <laughs> if you've got the cash to buy them. Yeah, okay. Um, All right. But, yeah, a lot harder than one of these. Yeah, lovely stuff. Well, I really appreciate your time. No problem. Thank you very much. All right. Good, man. You be careful on that, yeah? It, it looks a bit fast. You know, fixing cars, you'll know this man, obviously, wheel of dealers, but I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about his new show on yes. YouTube, which Workshop is Workshop Diaries. Diaries. Yeah, How's yeah. that going for you, all right? Well, I've, I've, it's going so well, I've got the T-shirt, so that's a good <laughs> place to start. Yeah, it's quite amazing. So last year, we did we did a, an episode every week, yeah. as we said we were going to do, and basically, we did as many episodes as we did in the first six or seven years Fantastic, of yeah. wheel of dealers. So, so, so it's quite mad how much content you can squeeze into that. So it's been quite a good fun. We've done all kinds of stuff. So we did electric ice cream van, we've yeah. done the orange, we've done an old really rusty Range Rover we've done boats you know yeah. so, so basically we're trying to keep it very eclectic trying to keep it kind of interesting and just kind of keeping people guessing really <laughs> fantastic so is there ever a moment when you embark on a challenge and think why did I do this? <laughs> what do you mean, like the show? Yeah, possibly. Well, I think it's, you know, I think there's often those moments in any project, yeah. but I, I guess, you know, before the challenge was, you know, because obviously that was part of the game, now it's more like you, you just want to get something licked, you want to get it sorted. Yeah. And so, like with the Range Rover, uh, John's thing, it's, it's actually, he's been sat in a garden 12 years. Yeah. It's utterly pointless. It's the wrong model completely. It's a 1986, so it's not the two door, it's not desirable, it's yeah. not the 89 onwards sort of thing, which is also kind of desirable. It's the one nobody wants. Yeah. And yet, that's what he had in the garden. And he wanted to drive it around, go green landing, go off-roading, and so we just thought we'd just do him a favour in a way and just do it up. But it's kind of nice because obviously it has everything wrong with it. So because there's tons of fodder for the show, which is what thing. So, but we've done all kinds of silly things as well, like we've cleaned a fuel tank on a cement mixer and all kinds of. Yeah, so we, we kind of like to kind of to it up a little bit as well. So. Great stuff. So got to touch on wheel ideas a little bit. Um, favourite car from that show? I think well, the Lamborghini Uraca was epic, yeah. and, and I got to drive that on my birthday in on the Dolomite Mountains, yeah. and you know you had this kind of anyway, it was just the most amazing noise of that flat plane V8 yeah. sort of in the back of your head as you're driving up the hills yeah. and it was amazing so that it was great. It made your but presenting counterpart do a funny face didn't it? If I remember well that, that often one. does but that's only because we were driving really fast <laughs> just trying to see how fast it would go but I think the I mean so that was great but I think I mean the Cadillacs of course I mean yeah. so we've got the, there's still the 1916 and 1918 Cadillacs yeah. so we are hoping to go on a, a peaking to Paris at some point maybe next year maybe in oh, a right. years time but that would be a real because that was a sort of unfinished business if you yeah. like and we did about two years work in about 15 weeks to get it ready to go to China and then we never got to actually get to China so so then it was really now just to do all those last few little jobs that weren't quite finished maybe give it a test drive would be kind of nice before we do 9,000 miles in 35 days so it'd be good fun. great stuff <laughs> good so just before you go Camberley why Camberley well I actually you're a local lad right well yes yeah, so, so I used to I was brought up in sort of Farnborough so, yeah. and, and so I've got a friend here who's organizes the show or helps organize the show and so he just gave me a shout and so here we are fantastic every year so yeah I think the funny thing is 
as a kid, I used to see a sofa car driving around the streets of Farnborough, which is where I lived for most of my life. Yeah, yeah. But at the time, social media didn't really exist, so you never knew who it was. It was just uh -huh. the mysterious man with the sofa <laughs> car, but at least we now know who that is. Yeah. Ed, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. Really appreciate it. Thank Take you. Care. Bye bye. Okay, just got to have a quick look around this one here. This is a replica AC Cobra 968. Lovely. Absolutely love the color combo that you can see right here. And I'm reliably informed that the owner upon receipt of this car was looking at a burgundy paint color, which he's changed to this lovely gray finish with the black stripes there. Obviously a replica, and the giveaway there is the position of the steering wheel, which of course should be on the left in an original. And of course, if it was original, it would probably be locked up in a safe somewhere because they go for some serious cash now, but lovely. Okay, a lovely 348 here. I do like these a lot. My favorite Ferrari is still the 355. 348, probably one of the last with these funky side vent details here. But this one's in lovely condition. And uh, if you're after one, it's for sale. But very nice example and very cool flat deck at the back there, right? Okay, the unmistakable shape of the VET Stingray C3. I love these things, always have done, always will do. Corvette made a shed load of these, so there's still plenty available knocking around the USA and quite a few imported to the UK as well. Quite a few enthusiasts over here. And the length of the bonnet, I think, is just absolutely insane. They don't make them like they used to. Beautiful bit of kit here. Probably one of my top five cars out there, just in terms of the shape. But great to see one here, looking cool in the UK. Okay, gotta have a look at this one. This is the VW Polo. And you might take a look at this and think, wow, somebody's modified this to make sure each panel is a different color. Well, not so. You can actually buy these direct from VW in this configuration. It's called the Harlequin config. And uh, you saw quite a few on the road back in the day, but I have started to see a bit of resurgence in these. So people obviously getting on board with them and uh, grabbing them as a bit of an investor piece potentially. But yeah, pretty, pretty mad, certainly catches the eye. Definitely want to have a quick chat around this one. Of course, Mark IV Escort RS Turbo. Lovely condition. In fact, this is in gorgeous condition, this one. Absolutely amazing. Used to really lust after these as a teenager, seeing them flying around on the road, but they're really cool cars. Okay, they look a little dated now, but this is a fine, fine example. Absolutely lovely. And that engine bay as well. You could eat your dinner out of there quite happily. Look at that, work of art. Right, I'm with Tom. And you may remember Tom if you watched the video of this very same car show last year. We spoke about one thing specifically. Remember what that was? Yes, that was indeed the front number plate it's situation. And at the plate. time, <laughs> Tom didn't have one because the aesthetics of the car would be uh, just being whistled at by a policeman on a penny farthing here. So all the things you get here. But yeah, the, the, the idea was to not have a front number plate on because it ruined the aesthetics of the car. But something's changed since then, right, Tom? It has. What's changed? Right. I can see a front number plate. Well, it seems that our friends at the uh, local right. constabulary are, are a little bit hotter than perhaps they were a year ago with the number plates. Okay. Um, so the general consensus was that it is now a good idea to, <laughs> to have a road legal front plate. Um, but I managed to find these guys, which is 4Dot, who do a really nice shaped plate yeah, that fits the car. Yeah, they look great. And um, I feel that it doesn't detract from the aesthetics yeah. quite as much as the kind of square plate just Yeah, I, I would agree. Side. It fits with the flow of the front of the car, right? Yeah. So I think the moral of this story is uh, you can't evade the law. It yeah. will catch up with you eventually. But we enjoyed it while we could, right? We did. We did indeed. <laughs> nice one. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> great to see you again. Okay, guys, that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Great to catch up with Ed. Some wonderful cars here. Wrapping it up. Do take care. Stay safe. See you on the next one. Bye for now.